this time I have a novel to talk about. It's called Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. And it is a Oprah book. Well, it's an Oprah book. It's also Pulitzer Prize winner. And it came out in 1922, which is a couple of years ago. So uh, what we have here is a novel, as I said, <clears throat> and it's set in Appalachia in uh, contemporary times. Well, it all ends around 2004. Um, now, this is quite a um, quite a leap for a, a writer. She she is uh, 69 years old, Mrs. Uh, King Solver today. So let's say she was what 65, 66, seven while she was writing this uh, 540 page novel. Uh, so, uh, but she it's written in the first person of a uh, young man, a, a kid. Uh, actually, he isn't even 18 by the time the book ends, I don't even think so. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, based in, in sort of on, um, on uh, David Copperfield, which is the uh, novel by, uh, of course, Charles Dickens. And uh, so it's, it's, it's that kind of a story. Uh, I haven't read David Copperfield. But uh, I take it from reading this that it's, uh, you know, one of those hard luck for children stories that, uh, well, that um, <clears throat> uh, Dickens was, was famous for, as in, you know, Oliver Twist and even The Christmas Carol, uh, Tiny Tim and all that, and, uh, you know, and David Copperfield. Um, <clears throat> so... What we have is a, uh, a setting in Appalachia, as I said, up in, up in the mountain region, uh, up uh, in uh, western, way western Virginia, western northern Virginia, right around Tennessee, West Virginia, all around, uh, all, and Kentucky, all around there, which, you know, deep into the Appalachian sort of thing, which uh, ultimately took over with coal mining and so forth. <clears throat> Toward the end of the novel, she, she, uh, the character uh, is turning, you know, like 17 and kind of discovering himself and discovering where he's, he's come from and, and why it is the way it is. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about him and a friend who are drawing a cartoon, uh, a comic strip about the uh, area and about, uh, well, what we call hillbillies. Now, I'm, I'm uh, kind of from these kind of people myself, being that my last name is Carter, of course, and uh, that I, uh, my father and my grandfather were born in Oho Olive Hill, Kentucky, uh, which is um, just not far from the border of Ohio, and not quite so deep Appalachia as uh, what goes on in this book, but, you know, enough. Um, and, um, and my grandfather uh, moved up to uh, northern Ohio to work in the steel mills, which a lot of those people did back then, which is, was better than going south somewhere and getting into the mines, I would think. I mean, I don't know how those people crawled around in the dark all day long for 12 hours a day, um, <clears throat> absorbing their black lung and, and everything else. But it's not really a minor story. It's about, it's about the time when all this stuff has kind of moved on uh, and there's really nothing going on for these people. Uh, and, you know, that's part of the, the deal with... Uh, uh, when they're, when they're writing the comic strip later, that they're, they're concerned. There's a lot of stuff about finding him finding his identity as one of these uh, mountain folk uh, and how the rest of the world looks down upon the mountain folk. Uh, hillbillies, dumb, uh, moonshiners, XXX on the jug, uh, drunk all the time, no shoes, uh, living in horrible shacks, having too many children, uh, you know, all these things that uh, come to mind when we think of the, the hillbilly sort of thing. Um, I've read other books about this, uh, 
one one of them is called um, Ramp. Uh, what was it called? Ramp, Ramp, uh, Ramp something. I'll look it up and tell you. But uh, there, there was, you know, a, a books, book. There are books that explain how all this went on, how basically these people were kind of living off the land, a hunter and gatherer people, uh, until the land was coming and taken away from them, and uh, and they started doing the, the coal mining. The mining companies came in, and they all went into the mines for their jobs, and until that fell apart, and. And all the tragedies involving with the with the mine work and the industrial labor and the union battles and so forth. So, uh, <clears throat> but this is really about more contemporary times, and and it has a lot of to do with with the uh, well the drug epidemic, uh, which is the next wave of trouble for rural America, and and this this. Uh, this thing with be, between the, the you know calling people the hillbillies and so forth. Well, you know, as a New Yorker, I see uh, a lot of uh, a lot of this calling of people looking down at this people or that people or saying these people or that people are the problem. Like you know, as urban people are now you know some sort of a problem. Uh, they are um, you know we're we're all the the uh, liberal class here and and you know we're all certain type of people well we're not certain type of people at all there's all kinds of people in new york city and all kinds of strata of economic conditions and and the character uh demon uh learns that finally when he does some time in the city and sees well there's actually poor people in the city as well and that's just as hard and has other types of challenges like poor people in the country, they have to keep the car running in order to get food and, you know, things like that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of these different challenges, but it's a really a, a kind of a downbeat story. And actually where, where the part where it comes upbeat a little bit was the kind, the part where I was, you know, I guess I wanted it to be a, a harsher, badder story and, and I wasn't particularly happy with the, uh, the with the good part because the good part he becomes a football star for like a season um high school uh football star for a season so there's a little bit of stuff about uh high school football and how he's a football star and i'm like oh no is he going to be a football star through the whole rest of this and this is going to be the you know and i'm like oh no and you know i was hoping something would happen that um would set that set that uh, asunder and something did happen and he does crash considerably and yes this is a story about uh, him and his family his mo his dad he's an orphan so yes it's an orphan story his his father has uh, before he was born uh, jumps off the cliff at the uh, devil's devil's bathtub which is you know like a mountain swimming hole place where uh where there's cliffs and the stream and you know where the water has gone into the rocks for you know years and years and years and, and dug a, a, and eroded a, a pool and uh his father had made a jump into this thing and broke his neck or hurt himself somehow and died before the kid was born <clears throat> so he has a mother for a while until, but he's, you know, as he's young, his mother ends up, uh, his mother is, is, a, is a pill person and her, his mother's working at Walmart and, and taking pills. And uh, she um, meets a bad, a bad uh, daddy type, uh, this guy Stoner, who, uh, who beats up Demon and, uh, you know, is a real shit. And she goes on, a, uh, gets on another bender. She's been sober for a while, and then she's not sober. And uh, well, it doesn't end up good for her. So he ends up a uh, an orphan. <clears throat> so yes, there's a lot of stuff about the uh, opiate uh, that's really you know kind of present uh, 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 in things that are really going on in our culture now with with the opiate. Uh, crisis that's come from the pharmaceutical companies and a number of your pain, all the stuff that maybe we've watched on whatever the two of the two of the uh, big uh, series on uh, what Netflix and uh, whatever the other one was, uh, Hulu, uh, Dope Sick. And there was another series of, uh, like that as well about uh, Purdue 
and the pharmaceutical uh, sales and how they go around and sell. And there's this pharmaceutical salesman who is a, a, a boyfriend with one of the uh, relatives. It, it, there's an extended family going on, an extended family that he kind of gets attached to because these people are kind of all attached to one another in certain ways. And so that kind of rides him through a lot of this, but also brings down trouble onto him. Uh, and um, he ultimately does, does get taken in by this coach who is uh, related to his grandmother, and, uh, and he's the big coach of the generals. It's, it's Lee County. So they're the, they're the generals. It, that, she doesn't comment on that at all, but, you know, obviously this is a uh, Confederate sort of thing. But, you know, she also said uh, uh, in the text of the story, it talks about how, you know, the mountain folk were really captured to fight for the Confederacy because they didn't really have any uh, dog in that race because they were not slaveholders. They were poor mountain folk. They were, you know, living off uh, hunter-gathering, basically, uh, farming. And, uh, you know, they didn't really need to be involved with the uh, Confederacy, which was really a, a, a scheme of the uh, big plantation holders for cotton and tobacco and so forth. Oh, there is some tobacco harvesting going on here because he goes from place to place and he does find himself in really exploitive as a child exploitive situations where he's made to work in uh, conditions that are not good at all like there's some uh, tobacco harvesting scenes where he's uh, so we get a little stuff about tobacco harvest and he's doing it without gloves and he gets really like dizzy and, and screwed up because apparently the uh, nicotine from the tobacco plants can get into your skin when you're harvesting if you're not accustomed to it and can uh, screw you up, make you sick. Um, as anybody who's, you know, used nicotine and not being uh, familiar with it will find that it makes you, can make it kind of sick. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so as I said, there's a lot of this, this drug stuff going on in the story and, uh, it, you know, it's all very sad and, and Many people of the characters uh, die off. Uh, we do go into urban settings and some low life situations and we're worried about this person and that person. He meets up with a, a, a love. He, he keeps looking for love. He's, he's one of these, these uh, boys who, who didn't have a mother or had a mother for a while and she was kind of checked out with, with you know, substances, whatever, and then she died. So he's kind of looking for 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 mothering, you know, unconsciously, of course, which, you know, I did as well for years and years and and uh, well, it didn't work out very well for for the people who were the object of this because I didn't feel, you know, uh, suitable for accepting the love that I was given. So I just kind of screwed up all these relationships. Uh, but that's my story. Uh, with this story, he um, he has a, someone who's, you know, she's Dory. She's going to be the love of his life. She's going to be the love of his life. And that doesn't go out on very well. Her, her, her father is very ill and dying of cancer. And uh, he has uh, lots of, lots of, uh, of uh, patches and so forth that are brought in by the visiting nurses to treat his uh, pain and illness. So there's lots of... Uh, uh, lots of medication around that house, uh, and that goes the way we might <clears throat> expect it would. Um, ultimately, at the at the end, there they do look into what what uh, what this um, Appalachian and city thing is all about, and uh, you know he does kind of get an idea about what what has how they've been screwed over you know, for the past couple of hundred years uh, by, by other parts of, of our country, of the USA and industry and capitalism and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you whether he turns out uh, well in the end or not because, uh, you know, there's a lot of tension at the end where, where uh, you know, there's scenes where, you know, he, he could be, uh, you know, with a, with an addict like that, you know, they could be picking up at any time. And then we know that it all changes like overnight if that happens. Uh, 
that the sobriety is very important to uh, to live the opportunities that that are um, coming on to him and um, that are uh, that are available to him through the through the talents that he has and through the uh, uh, when he can what can he when he can work and when he can focus when he's not you know uh, obliterated which is what he would go for it with the uh, with the opioids and so forth. So, um, yeah, I, um, you know, I, I, um, I can recommend the novel. I think it's a, a good novel. It's not the greatest novel I've ever read. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, it is written in the, the, the point of view of this kid, so it doesn't have a lot of really depth of psychological insight and things like that that I might want so much in, in 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 a novel, I mean, are not they're not said. They might be shown in certain ways, which is, of course, a better way of telling a story. And uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a person who believes that anyone can tell any story of by any character that they wish, and any actor can play any character that they wish. So uh, you know, if she wants to uh, take on the character of a of a teen boy. Uh, at age 67 and write a novel of it. She's perfectly uh, uh, entitled to do so. And a novel is not the real world. It is a fiction. So everything about this is a fiction. Uh, it does have uh, lots of romantic kind of things going on with it. He is looking very much for love and relationship and um, you know, a lot of that really resonated with me. I really understood a lot of that and felt it uh, myself and thought about relationships that I've had that didn't, didn't work out so well and, and, you know, maybe could have if, if I had been a, uh, a better, maybe a more, more sober person because, you know, it's not like I'm, a, I'm a unfamiliar with addiction. I'm very familiar with addiction in, uh, in my own life but not like this opiate stuff, just you know, like marijuana, you know, very, very light uh, kinds of things that are not supposed to be addicting, but can be very psychologically and somewhat physically addicted to, addicting to some people. And, and I feel like, uh, you know, I might have had a whole different life had I not in, involved myself with these, th this addiction. I mean, it it's, it's wasn't as bad as alcohol or heroin and so forth, so forth was or isn't as bad. But uh, on the other hand, it's not, it's not the clarity and it's not the ambition. There's something about uh, a drug that gives you a reward and you're done. You don't have to really look for more other than the uh, substance itself. And you know, if you're bored, it can it can reduce the boredom. Uh, if you uh, if you have ambition uh, to to like write or something, it can cut down on the ambitions, the bit ambition, and uh, you know it derails things in a rather serious way. And you know, I had a long history of this, and you know, I wonder what I could have been had I not had that, and hadn't had a, a parents that made me more entitled in some way. I mean, we're not, we're not all equal here. Some people start on the, uh, start on uh, second base and uh, some of us start on the home plate trying to hit a, hit a ground ball. What? I don't know. Baseball references? That's, that's not me. Um, so, uh, yeah, about reading and so forth here. Um, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to try to uh, do some writing myself at this point. I feel you know, like I've been reading, I've been reading all these books, and I've yet to find my book. You know, it's like uh, it's like searching for my mother in relationships, or searching for myself in relationships, or searching for love of myself in relationships. Uh, it's uh, in all these books I'm reading. I'm never finding. I'm never finding my my story and uh you know really the way I would say it and the way I would I would want it to be said and uh, maybe I need to write that before I uh you know drop dead here so uh <clears throat> I might change the name of my channel I'm thinking of a 
I have another channel called Tickled to Death, which doesn't have anything on it, and I really like Tickled to Death as as a as a thing to say because it's well, like in this book, it's it's one of those uh, things the old lady said back in Ohio. Well, I'm just tickled to death. You came over, and tickled to death to see you today, Stevie. You know, and that kind of a thing. So I, I like tickled to death. The uh, the metaphor of being tickled to death is just uh, you know it's it's. Uh, it's like America and capitalism will will uh, will uh, uh, give you all the treats and delights you you might want, and uh, it might kill you. Like well, like the opiates, you you'll feel great and you'll feel tickled and lovely and everything satisfied satisfied. But you might uh, you know you might go over into the other side as well. So uh, be careful with being tickled to death. So. Um, <clears throat> I think that's about all I have to say today. I'm happy the way my little YouTube channel is going. Uh, <laughs> a Facebook friend of mine who does a a a, uh, a blog uh, a, a, does a podcast about political things. Uh, you know, posted on Facebook uh, yesterday. It's like, how come I get? I put a, a picture of uh, the Grateful Dead in Times Square and get you know a whole bunch of hits right away and comments and uh, I post uh, my uh, my my uh, podcast and get nothing you know uh, of course the podcast he considers more important and is, is his work where this photo is just his photo I say well you know people just react to photos you know <laughs> and uh, but uh, it was kind of a whining. Why aren't people paying attention to me? Why aren't people watching me? Why aren't people listening to me? And um, I kind of whining is just distasteful. So uh, I'm, I've uh, given given up on uh, anybody, uh, any caring about that kind of thing. So if there are people here, one is enough. So thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. I have a couple books here waiting to come up. I'm going to uh, read uh, Ron Kovic's uh, new book. So we're going to go back into the war machine and the uh, Vietnam War uh, veteran, the famous uh, born on the 4th of July, Ron Kovic has written a new book and I have it here from my library and I'm going to read it next. So uh, we'll see you then.